Hello, it's Aga from Marvis Artist. Today we'll continue the new V-Rays update and we'll talk about the Chaos Cosmos. Are we excited? Let's test it together. Last time we talked about multiple downlights, masking the frame buffer and new material override features. If you haven't watched this video, be sure you check it out as there are really interesting features and I'm sure they can help you in your future projects. With that being said, let's start testing Chaos Cosmos. So by clicking here, we can open the Cosmos browser. If you don't have the VRA toolbar on, right click here and choose VRA toolbar. So let's open the browser. Well, here is how it looks. Basically, we have three main categories to choose for. Let me quickly show you what you can find here. On the left hand side, we have different categories and if we click on one, we'll see the subcategories as well. Let me show you the first one, sofas and armchairs. There are not many of them, to be honest, and there are not the best types of furniture you can get, but I'm sure this library will grow quickly, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Here are the collections of chairs. There are some common ones, but again, it will be hard to work on a commercial project with just these options. Not too many of them. And I probably wouldn't use any of these beds in my project, but it's a good starting point and definitely great for learning. We also have accessories. You can see the subcategories. We can search by color, for instance. Let's say blue. Additionally, we can look for the models by the type of space. So this is a pretty cool option, especially if there will be more models. We can quickly remove the text as well. The library structure is well organized for now, but in the future, when will be more models, I would prefer to have, for example, sofas and armchairs separately. It will be much easier to find the right model. Let me show you the collection of lighting as well. You can see that we have some pretty common one here, which is really cool. Here we have a vegetation section, 210 assets, not bad. If you click on a specific model, you can see a better preview. Also, you can see who created the model, in this case the max tree, and all tags related to the model. Also, we can check additional info, which in this case is a scientific name of the tree, which is quite important when you work with the landscape designers. Actually, I would prefer to have this as a name instead of English Oak 002, but anyway, you can find this information here. Also, you can check the assets site, which can be really helpful if you need your scene optimized. You can see that there is more interesting plantings here, so if you don't need really specific plants, it should be enough. We can also search by name, see that it works pretty well. We also have some vehicles and people. If you know the render people store, I'm sure you are familiar with these models. There are 55 assets. There are different poses, types of people, so it can be enough for lots of projects. We also have HDRIs, day and evening, and I need to say there is a good collection here. Let's see here. So the creator is no emotion. And you can check resolution here. And at the end, you can search by creators, which I won't probably use too much, but good to have an option to search like this. Here you have the list of all creators included. So you can choose any of them and see what models are provided from a specific company. So you have the overall view of what you can expect. Now let's see how it works when working on a project. The scene I'm using today comes from our training for beginners, so if you start your journey with 3D, be sure to check it out, as I'm sure it can be really helpful for you. I put the link in the corner for your reference. Anyway, let's try to browse some models to the scene. 
In general, you will need to download the model first. If it's downloaded, you can see the blue icon in the corner. To import the model, you will need to click on the one you want and choose the import option. Another thing to keep in mind is to choose the right layer you want your model to be on, as the model goes automatically to the active layer. Well, I change it to the furniture and I import the sofa. You can see that the model is imported in the 000 position. It's imported as a proxy with the preview with file faces display. It saves lots of time, especially if you have a complex scene and you need to optimize your preview. If you want to see it as a whole mesh, you can always change it here. If you need to do some edits with the model for some reason, you can always add an edit mesh modifier and then collapse all. Okay, let's position the sofa. Maybe let's go back to the camera view and move it closer. And maybe I copy it to have one more as this is a quite big space. Maybe somewhere here and I'll move back the first one as well. Okay, let's put some armchairs here to fill up the space. We can choose the one for the same collection. So now I don't have the model downloaded, so we need to click the download button first. As it's finished, let's import the model. Here we go. We can go to the top view to make it easier to position. We can copy this as well. And let's go back to the view. Actually, I don't think it looks nice. Let's delete the one in the front and reposition another one. It's better. Let's move it all to the front. I don't want to spend too much time on this, so let's leave it like this. Let's look for some decorations now. Let's choose these books for instance. The same procedure. We need to download first and then import. It's quite annoying, but keep in mind that you just need to do this once, so not a big deal. If you will buy the models from the website, there will be much more work around, so in general it saves time. We can align them to the typo and position. Let's add something else, as it looks quite empty. Let's choose the ball. I expected a bit different proportions, but anyway, let's leave it. As I position the objects roughly, now it's the time to see how everything is rendered. Let's see. Let me zoom in this a bit so we can see the results better. It's not bad, but I think we need to adjust it a bit. So let's see the material. The material has simple structure. I think it's the issue with the shin parameter. I changed the glossiness value. Okay, much better. It's normal that we need to sometimes adjust some values, so it's not a problem. In general, it looks good. Okay, let's test HDRs now. Let's choose this one for instance. Cool, it's imported as a downlight, so it's a nice shortcut. 
I'm using the project manager, so it works similar there, but if you don't have any library manager, I'm sure it's great news for you. We can copy them up for the environment. I turn off the sun here. And let's see what happens. Works! Cool! We of course will need to adjust it a bit. Let's see the map. So everything is fine here, ready to go. We can of course change some things like the position of the sky. We can decide in which direction we want to go. I would go here with the sun visible in the background, but that's not really today's topic, so let's stop here. In general, I really like the idea of having everything together, so we don't really need to have so many third-party plugins. But for now, I still prefer to use the project manager because I have the access to my whole library there. But I can imagine that in the future this feature will be much better and we don't really need anything extra. So I'm really happy to see the future update of this and how the library will grow. I think it will be really interesting for you to see how we manage our assets with the use of the project manager, so let me know in the comments if you would like me to create the video on this topic. Anyway, thanks for watching, also don't forget to like this video if you found this interesting, share it, subscribe and do all these wonderful things. See you guys in the next video!